So this is a little bit more of an advanced video here to show some of the concepts about how to work with more complicated models. Um, so this is a model that I obtained off of Google SketchUp that I was able to export to FBX and then from there import the FBX model into Storyboard Pro. Um, so you can see that it's a fairly um, straightforward model here. It's an interior office scene and um, what's nice about this model is that it's got quite a few different elements inside of it. I've got all of these um, chairs, the desk, the books, these are all separated elements that I can find. They're separate mesh items but they're all contained within the same FBX file. So um, let's see, how can we work with this now? Let's say you know that I can use my first frame and my last frame tools to manipulate the whole room at once, which could be cool. Maybe I want to do something like I want to rotate around the room. But you'll also notice that as I select that, um, that, that object there, that 3D object, uh, something shows up over here in my 3D nodes view. So let's talk about what the 3D nodes view is. In case you don't see it there, I just got rid of it for a second to show you how you can click on the down facing arrow and then you can select 3D nodes. And then when you don't have anything selected, it shows all of your 3D objects here as nodes that are floating. And as soon as you select an object, it then is going to show you that object and all of the mesh items that exist within that object that can be animated. So you'll notice here that I have a group uh, that consists of the desk, the table, the bookshelf. So if for some reason I want to move around that group, I can move that group around using my first frame or last frame tools. And if I break it down, you see each one of these things is also broken down in a hierarchy in the original 3D file. So I'm accessing here the same 3D hierarchy that exists in my original file. I'm not doing any additional work here. I'm just accessing that same information there. So I can access the group, the books here. I can access the bookshelf and I can access the office chair. So let's say in this scene, if I decide I want to move this chair over, uh, hopefully without making it slide through the floor. So maybe I just want to move it over in that axis. Um, then I can just move it over and it's as simple as that. There is an additional thing that you can do if you click on something with your first frame tool, tool and you command or control click, that will also give you another way of sub-selecting nodes. But when you control click, it selects sort of the smallest common denominator. So you can see that in this chair, it's selecting that one mesh item. Same thing if I do it on my office chair here, it's going to select one mesh item from inside my office chair. But I, I probably don't want to move just that one item. I want to move the whole chair. And so effectively, I want to go up a level and I want to move, um, you know, that whole office chair group. So that's when this 3D nodes view comes in handy because it really allows you to select exactly what you want to select. And it's going to take the naming in here also from the naming in your 3D file. So if you have access to a software that gives you access to those names, like your, um, like Maya, for example, then it's going, you're going to see pretty much exactly the same thing that you would see here in Maya. If you're using something more like Google SketchUp that has some control over that, but some of that is hidden, then you might get some of these things that are just group keys or instance keys. And you can sort of ignore those and go directly to the ones that have the name that you want them to have. And that's going to be the one that you want to open. And also you'll notice that it does take the pivot point from the original 3D file as well. So if I want to open this door, it's going to pivot around the correct positioning, which is pretty cool, I think. So that's one thing that I wanted to show off with this scene. And then I also just wanted to show one more little thing with this one, which is let's do another camera move on here because camera moves, I think, can be a little bit tricky. So I added a keyframe in the first frame and at the last frame. I'll go to my timeline view because I like to be able to have my playhead there to let me drag in time. So I know I can tell here from the fact that my green 
manipulator here is showing up that I must have the first frame selected because I wouldn't be able to manipulate these guys otherwise. Um, but I just wanted to show you how it's kind of easy to use the camera view together with the top view and I sometimes like to put them next to each other. So let me just pop these next to each other again. I'm one of these people that sometimes just totally messes up my whole workspace by the way and then I delete a whole bunch of stuff and move a whole bunch of stuff around. So if you ever get yourself stuck, you can go to Windows, Restore Default Workspace, and it's going to bring you back to the default. Um, but you can always rearrange these things however you want to. But I just wanted to show you here how it's fun to make use of both the top view and your camera view there to make your, your manipulations on your camera. And then how it can also still be useful here to mat, turn on that mat um, around the outside so that you know exactly what you're looking at when you're framing your camera and then it becomes much much easier to frame what you want to frame so if I'm focusing in on the desk area here then I can move that I can rotate that camera in there and I can move it in a little bit closer from the top view if I want to and maybe I even want to put an arc on that move so now as I go over time I'm sort of zooming out from the desk 